Hey guys, Nye here. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about centrifugal force. Basically, the world seems to think you do not fly off from the center of a merry-go-round if you let go. The world also told me that the force you feel while spinning on a merry-go-round is actually not a force at all. And basically today, I wanted to tell you why all of that is not true and how the world was wrong. Welcome to today's Calling You Out, Centrifugal Force Debunked. Night versus Science and Physics. First, let me read a comment someone left me and show you the picture they posted. This is basic part of what inspired me. They said, the blue arrow in this picture is the direction you move after letting go of the spinning merry-go-round because that is the direction you are moving. You do not move straight away from the center. That is what they said. The link that they provided is down below. Okay, so here's the picture right here, right? And basically, this is the merry-go-round, this little circle, the whole circle around here, right? That whole circle. And this is the center of the merry-go-round. And this is where you'd be sitting right here, right here, right? And basically, this is the direction you'd go, okay? So what they're saying is you do not fly in a straight line away from the, uh, the center. You go off to the side, right? Okay, so that's what they said. Okay, now real fast, you might be noticing that I said blue arrow, but this one is black. Well, he posted a link for the picture, but I drew my own picture because it's pretty much the same thing and it was very simple to create. And basically, I did what I did just to save time, and you'll see what I mean later. You might actually have a hint of it now, but yeah. After a while of poking, prodding, and thinking in my world's best sandbox about this picture, the topic, and the arguments provided to me, my sandbox ended up showing me what everyone screwed up on. Before I get into that, let me break down what I'm talking about, because I'm sure what I'm saying sounds like a bunch of mumbo-jumbo to some people. For some reason, everything that everyone was telling me just was not working in my world's best sandbox. Uh, sandbox? By sandbox, I mean brain. And by the world's best, I mean it is the world's best. I have the world's best sandbox because I can imagine anything and make it work in my head and then directly translate it into reality and it will still work. It is pretty much why me and math are enemies really, so. I could just talk to you guys about that stuff for days, like, and then, like, you can look at this little aspect of it, and I'm like, no, you can't do that. What they said to me was just not working in my head, basically, and this is not normal. So I wanted to know what was going on, so I investigated it. In short, I found out why, and I made it work. What the world screwed up on was what they considered the center. Simply that. That actually explained why so many people were having problems with this, including me when it was first explained using their failed logic and reasoning. It also explained why people turned to saying that this force isn't real and what is happening is happening just because. And basically it was because they couldn't make sense out of this explanation that was screwed up. My theory on the matter is that they couldn't make sense out of it because what they were told was screwed up, just like what somebody told me was screwed up. That's my theory. But I took it to the next level and tried to figure it out. And basically, the center idea explains how the world was wrong and why the way I took it and the way I look at it fixes it. And I figured it all out just from the simple picture and what the guy told me and just toying with it and thinking about it. And I just, I figured it out and I just, I know why the world is wrong now and here you go. So what exactly was screwed up and wrong and what does the center have to do with it? In short, it was their idea of what the center was. Yeah, they were wrong simply because they focused on the wrong center. To get a bit more technical, they were focused on the wrong plane, the wrong center plane. I'm not exactly sure how to officially word it according to your math logic, but basically they weren't looking at the right plane and they weren't looking at it right. So that's why it didn't make sense to me and I just feel like everybody else just agreed just because. Which I don't do, I never do, I question everything. I call the center that I found the true center because that is basically what makes way more sense to me. Far more than their idea of what the center is. So by using the true center, it actually worked. I was able to actually create a machine and device in my sandbox and make it work. And it worked on its own, basically. Just changing up things a little bit. I just, I made it, I played it out, and it worked. Simple as that. So where exactly is this true center deal? The true center is where your butt sits on the merry-go-round 
or the object that you plan to spin that is currently at rest. For example, if you're holding a ball and chain connected via a stick and the ball is just hanging from the chain. The ball and chain bit is a bit tricky, so let me explain that one for you. The true center of that depends on where you would make the cut if you were to detach the ball or ball and chain or throw the entire stick itself. So basically, it depends on where you cut and plan to release the other end. Now, at this point, some of you might be feeling enlightened by what I just revealed right now. If so, you have a good sandbox like I do and should hit that sub button. If not, don't feel bad about it. I'll still help you out and you should still hit that sub button. Basically, my argument is that the center is not the device that is moving you. So basically, this right here, this red dot, the center of the merry-go-round, that is actually not the center. That is what screwed up everything. That's not correct. Why not? Because the device is not the thing that is being detached. Basically, where the subject of which we are calculating meets the machine is actually the center. And this is where the experiment should be based from. That spot is the true center. Basically, right here. This is the center. This is the true center. That's where the focus is, okay? And again, I'm going to explain that to you. So you might be asking, why are we not using the device, basically the merry-go-round? And simply put, we are. We are just including the subject, and that's basically whoever's spinning on the merry-go-round. And because of that, we need to combine them to understand where they would go and where the center is and where that straight line comes from. An example real quick, just to get you to understand what I'm talking about, basically, is a bullet does not just randomly fire from a gun and hit its mark just because you pulled the trigger. And that's basically what everyone is saying when they try to say where the red dot is, basically. When you say that the red dot is the center, that's basically what you're saying, that a gun just fires itself and lands and everything's perfect because of that. It's not true. You still need to have someone hold it and aim it. That is equally a factor in the bullet firing and hitting its mark. And I think that small detail is basically where the whole world went wrong. So I hope that kind of enlightens some of you some more. And if not, I'm not done yet. See, the world was using the center of the vice that is moving the subject as a reference to where the subject ends up. And basically, that is what made no sense to me in my world's best sandbox. It was that mechanical value that screwed over my sandbox machine, and I didn't even know that was an aspect yet. How do I do it? I honestly have no idea. I just do it. And basically what I mean by that is I have no idea how I was able to formulate this idea of a merry-go-round and put all these uh, principles into effect that I just read about and then push play, and I have no idea why it didn't work. I don't know why. And then once I started to try to figure it out and understand it and try to make it work in my head, that's when I figured out where the true center is. And I was like, oh, it's because you guys are in the wrong spot. I don't know how that machine didn't work. I don't know what was going on. I don't know how I figured it out. I can't really explain it. I just did it. I don't know. It's weird. It's really weird. You can't say that the subject alone is the center, because if you have a five-foot subject, you would have to base it on certain points of that subject, because each point would change how it flew. So basically, depending on where it was attached, that would be the true center. Let me give you an example. If there was a rope attached here, this would be the true center. That's double vision, by the way. That sucks. It screws me up in League of Legends all the time. Anyways, if this was the true center, Notice how it's dead on now, because it comes and goes. That would be the true center. And if it was here, this would be the true center. Notice the words depending on where it is attached. The reason for that is because it relies on both things, the device and the subject. In the lengthy subject case, it also depends on what end. In the case of the middle, the force is split. If you actually center it perfectly so the subject will fly straight out, meaning that both ends, including the middle, will actually propel forward. But if you release a certain end, that would either lead or fall behind depending on how you threw it. Basically meaning if you took this water bottle and you attached it this way and I threw it this way first, then that end would fly out and it would spin this way. 
but if I attach it on this end, then this end would fly up first and it would fly up the other way. Make sense? When you take all of that in, the most logical location to base the experiment on is where the two meet, and that is where I found the true center. With that said, the direction you would fly off is in fact in front of the true center that I just revealed to you, which again is straight off the front of the true center. In other words, contrary to popular belief, if you spin on a merry-go-round, you will fly off it in a straight line from the center. If you took the initial motion from a merry-go-round and someone on the merry-go-round, and then you released that person at a different time, it would go straight out from that new point on. And basically what I mean is, if you have that merry-go-round and they let go here, they will fly off in a straight line from there. If they hold on and then they release here, their straight line is now here. You know what I mean? According to where they are, it's there now. Or it's here now. Or it's over here now. Does that make sense? So, yes, that's the case. Why is that true? Because that is the true center. The true center moves with them. The true center is not the center of the merry-go-round. It is where the person in the merry-go-round meet. So in that merry-go-round example, it would not be from the machine or you, but from where your butt rests on the machine. With all of that said, you should start to understand everything is relative. For example, the direction of the machine and when and where you let go. Those are all relative. Those are all factors to decide what happens to the center and where it's going to end up. If it's going backwards, then now your line's the opposite way. If the guy never lets go, then you never fly off, right? Everything's rel relative. All right, but what happens if you are not cut from the machine or you don't let go of the merry-go-round? Because you are still attached, you are now pulled a new direction. Meaning, your straight line won't land you near that tree anymore. Now it will land you near that hot girl you want to meet. Notice the word pulled, by the way. Pulled being the key word here because this pull is the very feeling that everyone claims is not real. This pulling is pulling you in another direction. Which brings us to point two in this video. That pull that you feel is actually a force. So let's talk deeper about this force we are feeling that supposedly isn't real. I've read a few articles about that that say that this force can be mysterious because you don't feel it. They flat out say that it doesn't exist because of that. That is wrong. So wrong. Just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just because the subject is not aware of what is happening doesn't mean that it isn't happening. Who even said that? Like what the f All it means is that it's happening without the subject being aware of it. That's it. I don't, I don't understand where the confusion came from. I really don't. Well, if common sense is not enough, which it isn't, apparently. Alright, alright, alright. If you had stuff sensitive enough to sense it, they would know, and that is because it actually does exist. Imagine, a merry-go-round. It has a compass on it. What is the compass doing? It's changing direction. It's spinning. Why? Because you are rotating on a merry-go-round. It's rotating because you're rotating. And it's going to do that even if you don't know you're rotating. In other words, not knowing it is happening doesn't mean that it isn't happening. And if it was, then that compass would not be rotating. So... And the explanations can be anything. You can have a radar, you can have a friend, you can open your eyes, you can touch the floor under the merry-go-round, the list goes on. I have no idea where this selfish notion came from, but that is very outdated thinking. If I had a guess, it came from back in the time when people thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. Cause like, what the fuck? I think people really need to update their books if that's the case. So here's the deal. You can, in fact, spin a merry-go-round slow enough and speed it up to a degree where the person on it will never know that they were actually moving. At some point, they will notice if you keep speeding it up, that is. At some point, they will start to slide off and they will start to feel that force on their bottom. That is a fact. 
No matter how you do it, they will do that. At some point, they will start to fall off. The reason for that is for the same reason that if you spin a merry-go-round fast enough, you will feel the heck out of it to the point where your legs are actually out in the air and you're like, ah. So why would your legs be doing that? Like, why is your butt scooting and why are your legs in the air? Because the fact that the force is actually real and is present in both examples. This force will actually send you flying off. The fact is that force is real. You are gaining momentum from a device, be it the person swinging the ball or the guy pushing the merry-go-round. That force becomes momentum, and you are holding on to that merry-go-round, which causes you not to exert that inertia that you're building up, as long as you hold on to it or it is released. As long as it spins and as long as you hold on, that inertia will build up. But what happens if they stop? It'll slow down and all that speed will fade away. Because it is a force, and it is very much real. So let us combine two points. You, a person, are the subject, sitting on a device, the merry-go-round. Your friend Knight is standing on the ground next to it. He starts to spin you and the merry-go-round. Faster and faster you both go. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Your butt is now lifting off the merry-go-round and you have to hold on to a bar to stay on. Your true center just changed from your butt to your hands holding on to that bar. Now think, what would happen if you didn't grab the bar? You would fly off in a straight line as compared to where your butt was. But what would happen if you let go after you grabbed the bar? You would fly off in a straight line as compared to where you had the bar and what bar you had. Basically, the true center changes depending on where contact is made and the final contact is lost. Does that make sense? So, do you fly off a merry-go-round in a straight line? Yup. Is centrifugal force a thing? Is it real? Yup. What evidence do you have? Well, truth be told, we all had the evidence. We all know the evidence. Basically, the evidence is because we can all feel it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I really hope I, you know, opened your guys' minds. I hope I explained something that you guys didn't know. I hope I changed your world. I don't know. I hope... I hope a lot of greatness comes from this, you know what I mean? I hope you guys spread this message around and tell everybody because this is something that the world, everyone thought, everyone agreed, and they all thought something, and they were all wrong, you know what I mean? And this is soundproof evidence. There is no way in heck you can disprove this. I went over it and went over it and went over it and went over it. And I welcome anybody to try to disprove me because this is it. This is, this is just, that's just factual evidence right there. That center that you guys said in center of the merry-go-round is not the center. The true center, as labeled by me, the true center is where the merry-go-round and the person make contact. That is the true center. That is where the straight line is developed. But anyways, again, that's it. Hit that sub button if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching. Hit that share button and spread this around. Get the world educated. Let's go. But anyways, that's it. So peace.